Hey everybody, it's EJ from iDesign.com and today I'm going to be showing you the quickest way you can add some nice noise textures to your layers inside of After Effects. Let's learn how. So here we got our little hungry caterpillar. That, that was one of my favorite books as a little kid. But uh, here's a little caterpillar and we're going to add some nice noisy textures to this character. Now there's a lot of techniques of ways to do it. But this is probably one of the easiest and fastest ways that I've discovered to actually do this nice little noisy, grainy look. So I'm just going to go ahead and let's just go to, this is our caterpillar without any of that texture whatsoever. And I'm just going to double click and go into the actual body segment of this caterpillar. And so you can see here's my little shape layer. And with shape layers, and this, this, this technique is, is specifically for shape layer kind of stuff, or you can add it to different other uh, objects as well. But what I'm going to do is go ahead and go to layer styles. And the quickest way you can get that noisy texture is going and choosing bevel and emboss. And right away, it doesn't look like nothing much. But what we can do is go into our bevel and emboss functions here, and we can adjust the size here. And the main thing we want to do is in these highlight blending modes, we want to change both of these to dissolve. And you're going to see right away that we have this nice noisy texture here. Now we can up the size of this. Uh, we can use gl global light so we can actually, you know, as this moves around or as this rotates, the shading will stay consistent. So this is nice if you have, say, uh, a light in the top left here. That highlight's always going to be the same, and the shadow's always going to be the same as well. So that's kind of nice that it kind of reacts to the global lighting there in the bevel and emboss feature here. So let's just go and open up uh, more of the uh, bevel and emboss functions here. So what you could do is adjust the opacity here and what you're going to see is that actually that's removing some of those grain speckles and if we crank up our opacity all the way you're going to see a nice fat like black layer or a black segment here and then it's just going to gradually noise out and go to these little specks here so one thing you can do is soften this a little bit to get more of those little specks in the darker areas here we can also kind of change the direction to automatically flip. So say we want to be lit from the bottom. And the other thing that we could do is go ahead and like sample colors from our main shape layer. And say we don't want pure white, maybe we want some little light green. And then I could do the same thing for the shadow color, just so it's a little bit more of a subtle effect. And you can see that now we got our grain. Now it doesn't animate at all. And this is because we actually need to move the layer around for it to try to kind of animate, right? So the problem with that is, is that unless our shape layer actually moves, that grain is going to be stationary, as you can see here. One thing we can do is add like a boil effect to this through like turbulent displace or something like that. And actually what I'm going to do is just add that via the, uh, my Boilet plugin that automatically adds some nice boil effects. So what I'm going to do is just select my layer, hit Boilet, and then now you're going to see that we have some nice undulation here and some boil effects on our layer. And you can see that it's actually moving and animating the noise here. So I can actually go into my boil effects here, adjust the interval to a faster interval, and you can see that our, our animated boil is moving much faster. We can up the size here and bring the strength down. So you can see that we have a nice little animated boil and that boil is also animating the noise there. So we have automatic noise, maybe a little bit lower of a strength on that animated boil. You can see that it's much more interesting than just a static uh, static noise. So another way we can fake this animated noise other than like boil or adding turbulence displace to our shape layer is using wiggle and wiggling certain properties on our bevel and emboss. So what we're going to do is just go to our boil it options, go to the effect controls 
and just turn off that boil effect and you'll see we have our boring old static noise again. So what we're gonna do is just go into some of the properties on our layer styles and we're gonna twirl the endless twirls of After Effects and twirl down all of our uh, bevel and emboss options here. And actually I wanna do a twirl and then an untwirl so I can actually see my blending options. We're just gonna twirl until we get dizzy and possibly throw up inside of After Effects here. But we're fully untwirled and what we're gonna do now is kinda go through all these options and see what we can change or wiggle and see what, if, what helps make some kind of fake animated noise. So you can see that if I wiggle like the size as I'm just like scrubbing back and forth here, you can see we got some kind of animated action going on. Same thing with the soften. You can get just kind of subtle movements with that noise. And then we have the angle and the altitude. And since uh, we're actually using the global blending, uh, the global light options instead of the local ones, uh, because we have the use global light on, changing these won't actually do a dang thing because we have to adjust this. And I think what I want to do is if you can see that as I'm like just scrubbing back and forth between like just a few notches here, like 117 to 121 degrees here, you can see that we have some nice undulation as well if I do, if I animate the, or scrub through the global light altitude here. So you can see with like a combination of maybe both of these, and adding wiggle to both of these little attributes here, you can kind of fake some noisiness. So let's go ahead and you can manually apply like wiggle expressions or something like that, but I'm gonna use the Wiggle It plugin that I just released recently that just automatically does it for you. And it makes it super, super easy because I just need to select the attributes I wanna wiggle and we're gonna wiggle it just a little bit and we're going to uh, use a, share, a shared controller because I want one controller to control the wiggle or the movements on both of these layers. So I'll make sure a shared controller is on. I'm gonna add it to the null that I already have in my scene that has the other wiggle it controllers that are controlling things like the, the leg wiggle. And I'm just gonna, with those two attributes selected, I'll just go wiggle it. And I'm actually can name this, so this will be the noise, and I'll hit okay. And this will add that to our Wigglet controller and all that we already have there. And you can see that we're wiggling all over the place. And so what we can do is then adjust like the amplitude. Maybe the amplitude's a little bit too much. We'll bring that to like four. And uh, maybe the frequency of five is a little bit too much. So maybe we'll do three. And the great thing about uh, Wigglet was you can actually introduce some like posterized time or hold time. So it's not just so frenetic and it's kind of making me nervous. It needs to like sit still. Like uh, it's just giving me the heebie-jeebies. It's just going too far, too much all over the place. So we can introduce some like posterized time and you can see that that kind of, well, it's aptly named. We are gonna posterize the frames and you can see that it's a little bit less frenetic and it looks like uh, some kind of animated noise there. A little bit so what we can do is maybe play around with the frequency see what looks good maybe adjust the hold times maybe give it three so we get a little bit more undulation there maybe we adjust the amplitude a skosh and just kind of play around with the the wiggle on those two properties and see what we get so you can kind of push and pull that as much as you want and uh, get some kind of fake animated noise going on using wiggle or using uh, wiggle it. So one other thing we can do is use different layer styles and kind of combine them or you can just independently uh, use this instead of bevel and emboss. So let me just turn off bevel and emboss for right now. I'm gonna go to the inner shadow layer style and basically what we can do is try to rebuild that bevel and emboss so we have a little bit more control over what's going on here. So what I'm gonna do is just increase the distance here, and this is gonna be a little bit of a different technique, and what we can now do is adjust the size and then add some noise to this. So you can see we're getting a little bit of a different type of effect. The main issue with this kind of route is that we have this really hard line here where the noise stops. So one thing we can do is try to adjust 
the opacity to try to blend that in a little bit more or maybe even adjust the noise a little bit lower so it's more of an even blend. But you can see that this inner shadow has a little bit of its shortcomings. But the nice thing is that we can use uh, this multiply blending mode or say darker color or something like that to get different types of blending modes on top of this. Because with the dissolve, it kind of just goes straight to uh, black and there's no gradation or any, any kind of thing like that. So kind of an, a little bit more flexible way here, but with that just hard edge there. So that's how you can get like an independently moving inner shadow. And again, we can say use global light as well. Now what we can do is add that nice little highlight using another layer style, and that is just the inner glow. And this is gonna be something that will just surround our entire object or surround the edge of our entire object. So let me actually just turn off the inner shadow. And same thing, we have this uh, size feature and we also have noise in this as well. And you can see that we also have this hard edge here as well, which is kind of kind of not looking too good. So what we can do is you know adjust the range and you can see that's actually introducing more of those uh, like a gradient is kind of pushing in a little bit more and adjusting how smooth that ramp is. So you can adjust the uh, range here. We can actually have this come from the center if you want, like a just grain on the center. I don't know why you'd want that, but why not? And then we have the choke here where you can actually choke in the, the, uh, the gradation of that noise. So you notice with the inner glow, we have the same issue as the inner shadow where we have grain, 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 sharp edge, and no grain. So this looks kind of garbagey with this just sharp hard edge where the noise just kind of stops. But the cool thing about inner glow is we have this color type option where we can actually use gradient. And once we can once we activate the gradient, we can go into edit gradient and I can actually adjust this color chip and see what happens. This is actually controlling how this noise fades in gradually into the center of the object, which actually helps this actually look pretty nice. You know, once we move this right, uh, this uh, black gradient chip over to the uh, left a little bit, you can see that this fades a little bit better. So this is really, really cool and really handy to do that. And the best part is, is that once we have the inner glow, we can combine this with the inner shadow and the bevel and emboss, and we can get all this nice color. We can get these different lightness uh, values of green and also this white that really introduces a lot more contrast than we would just using the bevel and emboss by itself. So we can actually go into our inner shadow and say uh, change this to a darker color and then change this to multiply. And now we have this darker shade up at the top too. So we can really have a lot more control over how our stylized noise looks by uh, just introducing the inner shadow the inner glow and the bevel and emboss all together. And the nice thing about this is, is that a lot of the techniques I've seen out there, you'd actually, they, they actually make the noise as a separate layer and you always need to have these separate layers that are, uh, that you have to then apply those effects to. But using the layer styles, you can have full control over each uh, object and have it all contained in that layers layer style. So I can then copy this and we can go to our caterpillar head and we can just copy this layer style and just hit paste and we have that layer effect applied to there again no need for an extra layer or anything like that and i can add this to the antenna as well and you might need to you know based on the size of those layers you'll have to go in here and you know adjust the size of some of these layer style effects and stuff like that make, make this a little bit smaller and then the inner glow, of course, we need to make the size a little bit smaller there. But you kind of get the point that, uh, you know, this is using layer styles is way easier. It's self-contained in that layer and you can get some really cool grungy effects. And then using the animated boil, we can have that nice animated noise uh, without needing to, you know, make a separate layer, add the noise onto that, then use a blending mode from that layer on top of the main, the, the, the original layer and all that stuff. So this is probably one of the fastest ways you can uh, turn it up and bring the noise inside of uh, After Effects. 
And that's my first public enemy reference in a tutorial. Go me. All right, so there is my quick and easy method of adding some nice noise textures to your layers in After Effects using a combination of layer styles. We use Bevel and Emboss, we use Inner Shadow and Inner Glow to create some really nice stylized noise, and then use the Boilet plugin for After Effects to add some nice animated boil that's very subtle, but then allows you to have that nice animated noise on your object as it's standing still. So if you have any questions on this workflow, leave them in the comments sections. And if you have a different method or workflow of adding noise to your layers, I'd love to hear it. So share those in the comments section as well. If you make anything using this technique, be sure to show me on Twitter, on Instagram. Love to see what you guys are working on out there. And if you like this tutorial, please hit the like button. I'd really appreciate that. And I really appreciate all of you out there watching this tutorial. I'll see you all in the next one. Bye, everybody.